Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Naturalist role, the fifth and final role added to Red Dead Online as of June 2021. The Naturalist role is a bit of a controversial role as it allows players to photograph and protect wildlife as opposed to hunting and killing, something that could be considered a bit out of place in the Wild West. To get started with the Naturalist role, you're going to visit the Welcome Center in Strawberry, where you'll be introduced to the two opposing characters of the role. Harriet Davenport and Gus McMillan. Harriet is the main character in this role and will ask you to sedate and sample animals for her. She's also going to give you missions as well. While Gus is going to encourage you to kill them and bring the pelts to him for special clothing items. At the end of the cutscene, you can purchase the role for 25 gold bars and Harriet's going to provide you with a field guide for cataloging animals. Gus doesn't provide any missions for this role, but you can visit him to sell animal pelts and parts. After you purchase the role, you're going to want to visit one of the locations that Harriet frequents to purchase sedative ammo for your varmint rifle, and then you're going to be ready to get animal samples. Okay, so let's start with Harriet and the basics of this role. Harriet is located in three different areas, near the fast travel posts in Lagra, north of McFarland's Ranch, and near Wallace Station in Big Valley. These are easily identified by the magnifying glass. If you watched the cutscene in Strawberry and did not have the gold to purchase the roll, you can always visit one of these three locations to purchase the sample kick to get started. You can also purchase sedative ammo at these locations, which is going to allow you to tranquilize animals so that you can get samples from them. Alright, so you're a naturalist and now you're going to want to start ranking up the roll. You're going to get varying amounts of naturalist roll XP for different activities, such as 10 XP for reviving a regular animal, 20 XP for reviving a legendary animal, 50 XP for studying an animal, 50 XP for selling normal animal samples, and 200 XP for selling legendary samples. You can also get 150 XP for poacher missions, and these are some of the things that you can do right away as a rank one. You can also eventually get naturalist roll XP for doing things like completing naturalist daily challenges, completing naturalist dynamic events, naturalist free roam events such as wildlife photographer, animal tagging, and protect the legendary animal, as well as Harriet legendary animal missions once they become available. You can't access the Harriet legendary animal missions until rank five, so I recommend doing a poacher mission and then sedating a bunch of animals to sell samples, and then do another poacher mission once it's off cooldown, and this is gonna help you rank up quickly. To start a poacher mission, go to Harriet and press square for missions, and then square again to start poached animals. This is going to take you to an area with a bunch of poachers that you're going to need to kill, and then you're going to need to free the animal or animals to end the mission. You can also obtain a lot of samples at a time by going to places like Emerald Ranch uh, and sedating farm animals or sedating gators in the swamps. To sedate animals, you're going to load the sedative rounds into the varmint rifle and then start shooting the animal. When you get the red marker, you're going to have sedated the animal. You can shoot it again to help down it a little bit faster, but it's going to walk away or move away before it falls to the ground, where you're going to see the paw print icon on the map with Z's next to it. You can also use your lasso to stop the animal from running away. This is particularly helpful with gators who might go toward the water. So if you lasso them right after sedating them and just hold them there for a second, they'll then fall asleep. Uh, you'll be able to then approach them. Once you approach the animal, you're going to have two options to sample them or to revive them, or you can do both. Uh, just to give you a tip, shooting them in the head will use less ammo than body shots, but be warned, the larger animals do take more shots to sedate than the smaller ones. You also can't sedate birds or really small animals such as squirrels, frogs, or chipmunks. It'll just kill them. I also don't recommend reviving animals unless you have a lot of money in the game as you don't get very much XP and they're pretty expensive. Full sample sets can net you a large amount of naturalist roll XP, but it can be very time consuming to find every animal in a set. I'll talk more about this set shortly. For now, I would just focus on poacher missions and selling single animal samples. Legendary animals were added with the naturalist roll. Even if you don't have the roll, you'll actually be able to encounter these animals in free roam, but there really isn't a whole lot that you can do with them until you've purchased the roll. As a rank one naturalist, you can sample legendary animals that you come across in free roam. They're gonna show up as a yellow question mark and you're probably also gonna hear the animal making a really loud noise. These are both good indicators that a legendary animal is nearby and you can head in that direction to try to locate exactly where they are. Legendary animals can be a bit tricky to sedate or kill them if that's what you're doing at first, just because there's no auto aim on legendary, so you're gonna need to rely on your free aim skills. And they can also be surrounded by a lot of non-legendary of that particular animal, which is gonna come after you. 
most horses are going to buck fairly quickly in this scenario. It doesn't matter what the animal is, and it doesn't matter how much you calm them or how good they are normally around predators. Legendary animals are just a little bit different. To keep your horse from bucking, you can use the dead eye card slow and steady, which means your horse literally will not be able to buck you while dead eye is active. And this can be particularly useful if you're trying to sedate some of the larger predators, such as panthers, cougars, bears, and wolves. Now, once you reach rank five, you're also going to be able to accept legendary animal missions from Harriet. Note that Harriet wants you to obtain samples of these animals, and that's what I recommend when you're ranking up the role. But you can use these missions to kill the legendary animals, which will help you fill up your trader role, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Legendary animal missions are typically a multi-part event where you're going to need to either follow poachers or search clues and it's going to lead you closer and closer to locating the legendary animal. It'll eventually lead you to a cutscene with that animal and then it'll uh, open it back up where you can then go try and sedate or kill them. As soon as you sedate or kill and skin the animal, the mission is going to end. You can do these missions with a maximum of four friends, and if you sedate the animal, everyone will get the sample. Even though only one person will do the animation and the mission will end, everybody will get that sample uh, in their satchel. Okay, let's go over a few more things about Harriet. At Harriet locations, you can purchase sedative ammo, blending tonics, which allow you to get closer to animals without spooking them, Hardy tonics to help you keep your cores if you're hot or cold and don't have the appropriate attire, weight gain and loss tonics, animal revivers, which are useful for daily challenges as animals will wake up on their own if you ride away, legendary animal pheromones, which again are really only useful for daily challenges as they generally only work once a yellow question mark has already shown up. You can also purchase pamphlets that allow you to craft the blending tonic, animal reviver, legendary animal pheromones, and sedative varmint ammo. You can also purchase the Wilderness Camp, which is going to allow you to place a small camp away from your main camp, and that way you can craft and cook on the go. Now, this Wilderness Camp is a particularly useful item if you got Outlaw Pass 4, because you would have received the fast travel option for your Wilderness Camp. As of right now, that is a pass locked item and cannot be purchased, but hopefully Rockstar will add it as a purchasable item in the future, as it is extremely useful to be able to place that camp down anywhere and and then to be able to fast travel away from it. Now here's where things get interesting, because I mentioned at the beginning that there are two opposing characters in this role, Harriet versus Gus. Harriet is very passionate about animal welfare and conservation, and Gus is a sport hunter. Once you have this role ranked up, you have the choice on how you want to play or use the role, but your choices can come with a consequence. You can visit Harriet for legendary animal missions and kill those legendaries to sell to Gus for garments or donate to Crips for camp materials, but kill too many animals and Harriet is going to put you in a timeout for five minutes and she's going to spray you and deny access to her tent. Now a lot of people get really angry about this, but I don't and here's why. Rockstar wants you to start to create your character's story and identity in Red Dead, to start to decide what type of person you are. We see this a little tiny bit with low and high honor, but this is the first time that there's a consequence if you choose to go against an NPC's wishes. Plus, it's only five minutes. Like, seriously, go to a daily or something else, you'll be able to access her again in no time. It's not that long at all. I really think, though, that this is opening up the way for more in-depth choices in the future, such as whether or not you're going to be a high honor and on the side of the law, or if you're going to start to become more of a low honor criminal. We have an update coming this year that's going to give you the choice to rob homesteads and align yourself with Guido Martelli and start to build your criminal enterprise. And I think this role was the first step in introducing consequences for your actions. After all, why should you be able to kill all the legendaries and then be able to access legendaries at Harriet's without any type of consequence? That really Really doesn't make any sense. But alas, just be warned, like it or not, after killing a certain number of animals, you're going to be sprayed by Harriet, so plan accordingly. Let's real quickly go through some facts about Gus because he is a part of this role even though you can't rank up the role at all through him. He has multiple locations across the map identified by the paw print and dollar sign icon. You can visit him to sell animal parts and pelts, purchase ammo, and purchase various garments, hats, and legendary animal garments. The legendary animal garments are pretty much all the same coat, just different color variations and animal heads. You can click each item to find out what ingredients you need to craft them. One of the things you'll definitely want to get from Gus are the trinkets. The beaver tooth trinket slows weapon degradation by 10%. 
The buck trinket gives you a higher probability of receiving better quality pelts from perfect animals. The javelina tusk increases your horse bonding rate by 10%. The ram horn trinket, which allows you to pick up two oregano, mint, or thyme for each plant you pick. And the snowy egret trinket, which decreases the speed your horse's health and stamina drain by 10%. As with past roles, you will access special skills, cosmetics, horses, and more as you rank up the naturalist role. Two useful satchel upgrades are the kit and tonic upgrades, allowing you to carry more of these items. I'm also a huge fan of the mercy kill skill you're going to learn. This allows you to kill fatally wounded animals without losing the pelt quality. This was something you could do in the story, but until naturalist role, you weren't able to do it online. The wilderness camp is also extremely useful, especially if you have access to the fast travel from the outlaw pass. The naturalist role also brought the gypsy cob, which is one of my favorite horses in real life based on looks, and it's a great addition to your stables in the game. At rank 1, you can access the piebald and white cob. At rank 10, the palomino and skewbald. And at rank 20, the splashed piebald and splashed bay. The gypsy cob is very similar in size and looks to the breton. They are shorter, stockier horses with good health and stamina. This horse is strong and powerful and generally does really well under stressful situations such as hunting and going into battle. I'm definitely a huge fan of the cobs and currently own one of each in my three different accounts that I play. Okay, let's wrap up a few things I may have forgotten to mention. To sell animal samples, you'll need to visit Harriet. You can keep up to 10 samples of regular animals and 3 samples of legendary animals in your satchel at a time. If you open your field guides, you're going to be able to see all the different categories of animals from regular ones such as farm animals and wetland animals to legendary animals. To get a stamp in the book from Harriet, you're going to need to sell her a sample. You can only have one stamp at a time, so if you sell 10 samples for an animal, you're still only going to get one stamp in the book and you'll need to go out and get another sample to turn into Harriet the next time. To turn in a completed collection, you need to have a stamp for each animal in that category, and then you're going to press the square to turn it in. Naturalist is definitely not a good role for making money. As you can see, I only get $110 for the wetland animals, and I needed to get samples of 13 animals, some of which are more rare than others. You can get a decent payout for turning in a completed legendary animal collection, but it will take time to get all these samples. So again, there are better ways in the game to make money. So it's not, if you're trying to like grind money, it's not a good way. You can also choose to 100% the field guide, although to my knowledge, you don't get anything special for this, but for you completionists out there, you're gonna need to track kill, skin, study, sedate, sample, and photograph every animal in the guide aside from common critters to get 100% progress for that animal. If you're struggling to find an animal, including legendary ones in free roam, don't forget to use the Gene Roki map for spawn locations. And you can also try to get a legendary animal to force spawn by traveling to the area they spawn in and then changing lobbies. If you do this a few times, sometimes you can get them to spawn. Supposedly there's a cooldown on legendary animals, so if you kill or sedate or sample a legendary wolf, you won't be able to encounter any legendary wolves in free roam for 72 real-time hours. However, Rockstar may have changed this as I have definitely encountered the same legendary animal in a short amount of time. It could be because the legendary is spawning in for another player in the lobby. I have not tested this out in a private lobby, but just be aware if you're having trouble getting an animal to spawn and you spawn another animal of the same species, that could be one reason why it's not showing up. I hope you found this video useful in giving a quick overview of the naturalist role and how to rank it up. I'm sure I missed some details, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you're watching and you have a tip for new players that I didn't mention, please let us know. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.